Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and in this video, I will be talking about a new pattern. I um, I didn't find it. <laughs> I actually was asked to test a pattern by um, I'm trying Elisa, and she has a blog called Llama Unraveled. Um, of course, everything I'm going to be talking about, there should be a link in the description to her blog website. I believe she also might have a Facebook group, which if she does, I'll put a link in there. Um, so anyway, she emailed me and said, hey, um, you love to crochet and you're a teacher and I just made this pattern. Would you please test it? And I was super excited, you guys, because I have never been asked to test a pattern. And I was thrilled. Debbie, the Canadian crotcheter, she gets asked to test patterns all the time. And I've been so jealous. <laughs> so I said, yes, yes, of course I will. Now, I taught myself how to read patterns. I think for the most part, we all really teach ourselves, right? You want to make something that's in a pattern, so you look up the stitch names. And for a while, I went back and forth looking things up online and reading the pattern. And I've, I've gotten to be decent, I would say. Um, I can read and usually crochet something that's at least intermediate, usually. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. I was a little worried because this pattern had some techniques that I was not used to. So this is what um, she had designed. It is a stocking, but it looks like a crayon. So it's for like, you could make one of these for your teacher, for your parent, your student's teachers or maybe for your grandkids teachers for a Christmas present, put some goodies in there. Or if you have somebody in your family who is a teacher, you can, um, you can make one of these for them. Now, this is, this is a very simple pattern to read, to read in general. Even though it has some intermediate techniques, it's a very simple pattern. The thing that I really liked about this pattern is Elise, Elisa, would tell you how to do the technique in full words. Um, I found initially when I was first learning how to read patterns, it was helpful. So she would say something like two double crochets in, or a du two, two double crochets in the next two stitch, then two half double crochets in the next two stitch, then two single crochets in the next two stitch. So she would write it all out with words. And then underneath, for the more experienced readers, it would say, 2DC, 2HDC, 2SC. She would have it all there in strict abbreviations. So if you're someone that is very good at reading patterns and you don't need all the words, you could just scroll down a little bit and write there, or if you're reading it on paper, it was all written out. And then if you're someone that really kind of struggles, there is the word. So that was really nice about this pattern is that she has both the wording for someone who is not affluent of a pattern reader and then straight abbreviation for someone that doesn't need to doesn't need to waste their time on that and can just go. I'm, I'm going to be honest, both both ways were helpful. Once I kind of got a figure on how to do this part, I didn't need to read her whole written out part. I could just scroll down and look to where it had um, the a strict abbreviation. The other technique that, um, or the main technique in here that I had never done before that was part of this pattern was working with bobbins or the alternative is carrying yarn behind. So if you look at this, rather than having an applique, which is technically what I've done at this point, if there was like a, a pattern where maybe there was a different color tummy on an amigurumi or whatnot, I would crochet the whole thing in color, make the tummy in a lighter color, and then sew it on. This has you crocheting right straight through with the pink or whatever main color you choose, and then you let go with your pink, you pick up with the other color, and you go. Now, I will tell you for this pattern, you have a black, you know, label here, and then one on the back. So essentially, I carried my pink, my pink, and I had my black on a bobbin, which is something I'd never done before, and I had to look up to figure out how to do. So essentially, I took some black yarn, and I pulled out a whole bunch of it, and I wrapped it up on a little cardboard piece that I cut, and I had it hanging down as I was working in the stocking. And so I would crochet with the pink, I'd let it go when it came time for the black, i pull up the black that was hanging on that bobbin, that center piece down there, i crochet the few stitches, 
Now, meanwhile, I would hold the pink and have it run along so that it went behind the black. Then I would stop with the black and I'd keep going on with the pink. You could have essentially had two black bobbins and maybe three pink bobbins, but I decided to carry my pink behind. Um, and yeah, so for it being my first time working with bobbins and color changing, I think I did pretty good, but there are a few places up here, as you can see, where it kind of got rough. The other thing is I think choosing pink for my crayon was probably not the best choice because it's such a light color. If I would have chose like blue or dark purple, you probably wouldn't have seen um, the riffraff of the black on the side here that you do with the pink. Um, the colors I chose, this is that raspberry that I had left over from making the sloths. This is, and it's Red Heart Super Saver. This is Red Heart Super Saver Pink, and this is I Love This Yarn Black. Um, at the top, which I have not officially sewn in, because I think I'm going to do something crazy, you guys, is the stocking tag, or, you know, holder. Um, I'm thinking about pulling this off and turning this into an amigurumi. I haven't talked to Elisa yet to let her know that I was thinking, but I would, I was thinking about stuffing this, crocheting in the back loop all the way around and closing this off like a like a flat crochet or even crocheting a flat circle and joining it there <laughs> and stuffing this and just making a giant pink crayon pillow um because you know i'm addicted to amigurumi lately in general i really love the pattern um it was very well written very easy to read for this being an intermediate pattern because i think of the bobbin work and switching off between the colors while you're going around. Um, it, it was very well written where um, it did not take me that long to figure out her techniques. So <clears throat> what I wanted to tell you though, is here she has a link to the PDF pattern. Um, she has a giveaway because she is just debuting this pattern. Um, and so I'm gonna put a link below for you to click on and she started the giveaway to do from yesterday, um, which was, what was yesterday's date? The 21st, I believe. Yep, July 21st to July 28th. If you go to her website, um, I don't know if this is a paid for pattern. Let me just click and see what happens. Because I've got my fancy schmancy Chromebook, Chromebook over here while I talk to you guys. Um, so let's, oh, it's a giveaway YouTube video. So she does have a YouTube channel where she talks about her, oh, here, let's click on the pencil stocking. Um, the pattern is on her blog, Llama Unraveled, and she also has a pencil one and a crayon one, just so you guys know. Um, let me see if they're free. That's the one thing I'm wondering. I'm not quite sure. I should have looked this out ahead of time. Um, but anyway, I will put the link in the description to her blog and her giveaway video because she has a giveaway running. Hop on over, you guys. This is going to be a great present for, like if you had a daughter or a sister or a brother that is a teacher and you wanted to crochet them something for Christmas, this. And then like I said, I think this is very easy. <laughs> To convert to an amigurumi just stuff this sucker full of stuffing and crochet close yourself out a flat circle right there and then you have got a giant crayon pillow so which Elisa I hope you are not offended that I think I'm gonna do that I do love the crayon stocking don't get me wrong but like I said I've been addicted to amigurumi so yeah, I think it's wonderful. Check the, de whoa, I just kicked you guys. Check the description box below for the link to Elisa's blog where you can get her pattern, where you can watch her video and be entered into the giveaway. And thank you so much for the, um, the chance to test out your pattern and the opportunity to talk about it in a video. I, um, I'm so happy and I feel, I feel so thankful that you let me do that. All right, that is all for this video. I hope, um, I'm gonna put this up right away today. So this should be up 722 because I want everybody to have the chance to head over to her channel for the giveaway and not miss out. Um, which meant when I got up this morning right away, I had to get dressed and ready. So, cause you, 
<laughs> I needed to get this video out for her. I wanted to make it yesterday, but my kids were just living it up and we were getting some new couches delivered so I had to make sure you know you got to move the old couches and if you have kids you know that underneath the couch is a disaster so you're cleaning under there picking up fruit snacks vacuuming who wants this little ball is this little toy gonna go in the trash why is there a crust of bread under the couch you're not supposed to be eating and drinking in the living room, so there shouldn't be food under the couch, right? But there always is. So that's what I did most of yesterday. And of course, they give you a three hour window for when the couch will be delivered. So I'm sorry, Elisa, this didn't get out yesterday, but it will get out today on the 22nd and you have till the 28th to be in her giveaway. Okay, thanks for liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and sharing my videos. And until the next video, happy crafting. Bye.